Good morning, everyone. I'm going to jump in with quick introductions. Uh, my name is Patty Brem. I'm part of the um, customer success uh, team here at Ex Libris. And um, joining me on the call today, she's taking notes in the background, is my associate, uh, Sean Blake. Uh, she is based in the EMEA region. A little bit about what our department does. Um, we basically are liaisons. We work with you to build a relationship and create desired outcomes for you, whether that's something short term, like getting a new summon feature up or long term, such as conducting a usability study or really assessing your holdings. Uh, our team is here to share best practices about how libraries use our products, help them make for your local needs, make it easier for you to get more value, which is what we're doing today. So why did we choose this topic? Um, FY 2020 has presented uh, unique challenges. Uh, we understand that academic libraries and other institutions will have to make difficult decisions for the next fiscal years. While there are many, a variety of summon analytics and tools, we are focusing solely on reports that provide key information on holdings. And then when we talk about value of summon, we're going to look at two things. What tools are available to you in the client center and summon to really make these assessments and decisions? And then what other resources are available for you to assess patron behavior and improve the visibility of key library holdings or, and resources? Here's what uh, institutions like yours are telling us. Um, you know, th there's going to be probably cuts to budgets uh, for institutions focusing on hybrid or remote learning. Um, your day-to-day -day attention has really shifted to your learning management system, whether it's Blackboard, Moodle, or another program, as well as making e-resources available for patrons who can't physically visit the library. Um, balancing the demands of this new normal and taking time to strategically assess your holdings is a key pri priority. And with everything else going on, it's got to be an efficient process. So the first thing we're going to look at is the 360 core business intelligence reports. Um, 360 cores business intelligence tools, uh, also, a, also known as the client center, they're often overlooked. Um, we're going to focus on several key out of the box reports available to some 360 core and summon customers. Uh, these will be management reports, including the database details report, data on demand, and overlap analysis. If you subscribe to other 360 services, um, such as 360 usage or 360 mark, more data may be available to you um, within those other products. So management reports uh, are a variety of port reports that give you a bird's eye view of your holdings. They include things such as uh, the, the tracked eBooks, tracked e-journals, tracked resources, tracked videos, and more. Uh, at the end of each slide, we actually have um, a key knowledge center article. So you can actually click through when you get the presentation slides uh, to read the product documentation. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of my presentation really quick um, to go to the live demo. So um, you should be able to see my client center. Um, this, I have all the products on the side because this is an, um, an Ex Libris uh, test site. Uh, to get to management reports, I'm going to click here under business intelligence tools. And so what's great about management reports is they're pretty um, straightforward. You can pull lots of different things um, for the holdings. You can pull by um, polling type, so ebooks, e journals, resources, and then the database details report is right here. So you just simply select it, you hit request report, and then your report will be generated. And I'm going to cheat a little bit. I actually pulled um, reports before this meeting so that we can kind of take a look at what they look like when you extract them to Excel. So with the database details report, 
we're getting a bird's eye view of your database subscriptions. Um, why is this important? He, this is a full list of all the databases your library is subscribed to, so long as the status is anything but not tracked within the client center. This also delivers all the information that you can find on the database details page you'd see in the client center. So first column, you see the um, alphanumeric, depending on the database, um, ID that you can use to look up this database. You'll see the default database name. If you have had a custom database name that you've um, inputted, you'll see that. Uh, the collection. <laughs> Forgive my uh, expanding the cells. The provider code. The provider. And then here's where we really get into the granular details of book holdings from the database, journal holdings from the database. Uh, are you subscribed to the database and have you uh, selected it to display in 360 link if you have 360 link as well as display in your other 360 products and i believe one of these columns is also on uh, display in summon you'll also have uh, the default url for um for the database and then for some databases, for example, if you have a Gale database and you've input a custom URL, you will use that. This will ask you, are you using database level for all titles? And it seems like most of these on my report are no. Um, we're not excluding the proxy. And then we only to subscribe to some titles in this database. So you'd see this column as a yes or no, if, for example, you had a database that you only subscribe to 50% of the titles. So let me just show you where that corresponds to in the client center. All the information you're seeing in this spreadsheet is the same information you see here when you go to data management. Um, it's just in a different order. Um, and when you click through to the individual database and database management, this is giving you, this Excel sheet is giving you the same information that's here. It's just in a larger spreadsheet. Um, any custom coverage, notes, um, public notes, materials, Gale location ID, there we go, um, will be included in this report. Uh, for purposes of this demonstration, I have not gone in and added anything, um, but this gives you an idea of where you can go if you wanna sit down with a full list of your database holdings and say, okay, what are we subscribed to? What are we using? How big of a holding is it? And you can also then later in the presentation, I'll show you where you can look up uh, usage statistics uh, within Summon uh, for your databases to see like how you're getting the most uh, return on investment with them. So the other uh, key tool we're going to talk about is overlap analysis. Um, I can't emphasize enough how much I think this tool is useful to Summon users and as a back best practice. What is overlap analysis? So it highlights your e-journal and e-book titles that are available in more than one database. It'll show you the number of e-journal and e-book titles that are unique to that database and the number that are available elsewhere in your collection. Why is this important? You can identify databases that deliver the most value for your library, evaluate, evaluate possible changes to your collection, get the most out of your electronic resources budget, increasing the depth and breadth of your collections. Um, when I've talked to libraries and we're talking about using overlap analysis, uh, they've been really talking about using overlap analysis to assess, you know, where do we have so much overlap that we would prefer one database provider over the other or vice versa, depending on our patrons' needs. In the report, you're going to see the following terms. Each one is going to be a unique column heading. You're going to see title unique. That's journals and books. 
that are available in only one of your databases. Uh, holding unique, that's journals that are available in more than one of your databases, but they have specified unique coverage dates. Total unique, this is a combination of the number of unique titles and unique holdings from the first two columns. Full holding overlap, journals and books that are available in more than one database. Coverage dates are completely overlapped by at least one holding and then partial holding overlap. The coverage dates are only partially overlapped by another title. I went homepage. And then I went under business intelligent tool, intelligence tools and I selected overlap analysis. Uh, I am going to edit the default list so we only look at. So here you can see I can choose uh, based on the status of the list. Uh, it's a simple drag and drop. Um, so it can be for consortial resources. It can be for resources that you have a trial with, um, resources that are under review. Um, for purposes of this, I will hit and save it to subscribe. I'm going to hit yes. I'm going to refresh my databases list. And then we're going to try and run the analysis. There we go. Awesome. OK, so going back to um, what we were talking about a little earlier, you have the database name. You have the database status. Um, titles unique. So again, that's journals and books available in only one of your databases. Holdings unique. That's journals are available in more than one database, but they have different coverage dates. Um, so say I had um, a farmer's almanac database and I had two, but the coverage dates were different. Like one covers 1998 to 2000 and then one covers 2000 to 2005. Um, those could be examples of holdings unique. Uh, total unique is just the sum of these two columns. Uh, holding overlap, that's, um, it's more than one database, uh, has both the same journals and books, but the coverage dates are completely overlapped by at least one holding. And then partial holding overlap, the coverage dates are only partially overlapped by another title. And then it, you'll also have a nice title overlap a total, a total from the resources, and then it'll also uh, kind of spit out a percent of full overlap and a percent of unique. So you can also, again, use overlap analysis to really assess how much, how much of a particular database or title is unique for my collection, or can I get those resources elsewhere from another um, specifically often used database? Data on demand. So this is probably one of the largest reports you'll get uh, what it is. It's a report of all your library's holdings, including books and journals. Um, this is where you get a very holistic view of all your holdings. You can take a look at your resources by type in individual reports, by holding types such as journals, ebooks, etc. I want to make a very clear note for Intoto customers who are on the call. Um, this data on demand report is not available within Intoto, but you can contact Xlibris support and we will help you generate a data on demand report for your institution. Um, just so you can see what part of a data on demand report looks like. Uh, this is my data on demand report in Excel. Um, you can see that this has quite a bit of information. Um, almost everything you need um, regarded to each holding. What's also included that I want to point out um, is that in this case, um, we've included our proxy URL for this uh, test site. And this is just one of several pages of the report. Let me open my um, my downloads and I can show you that 
data, data on demand will actually sometimes spit up multiple exports. So these are only two that I chose. Yeah, and here we have the journals. So it's nice, you can break it out by resource type. Let's, so let's take a look at that and how you do that. So again, I went under business intelligence tools. If you choose just to run a default report, if you hit generate new report, um, you can choose the encoding. You can choose, do you want the Excel file with or without subjects? Do you want the subjects in one column or multiple columns? Um, you can divide by content type. Um, the reports I just showed you in Excel, when I generated them, I chose to split up by content type, um, but it is very possible just to hit all content. Uh, this report does take a bit to generate. Um, so for purposes of this demonstration, I'm not gonna generate a completely new one on screen. Um, but when it loads, you will get an email and you'll be able to download the zip file here. Next, we're gonna take a look at summon out of the box reports. Um, summon analytics reports that are key for FY 2021. Uh, of course, working with summon, I think they're all important, um, but just to narrow things down, uh, for collection development, I recommend you look at popular searches and the zero cert result searches. Um, those two will look, will tell you key terms and what uh, patrons are actually searching for, for. For assessing usage behavior, action usage, um, in simplest terms, that's how many people are logging on uh, and doing summon searches, session usage, how long are they using a summon session? Title clicks is what I'm gonna pull up next. Um, that actually shows you clicks by database by summon search results. And then device usage tells you, are they using a mobile phone? Are they using a desktop? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go into summon analytics. Do so, I'm gonna hit summon under the administration console. I'm gonna to go to usage. And summon usage statistics. And uh, several of you on the call may be familiar with this already. It's always just good to have a refresher. And if you ever run into this screen that I do, uh, you can simply try and refresh the page. Or I will try and refresh the page again. Um, I am specifically choosing to focus on the title clicks report because uh, I think it's a little bit newer. I think we rolled it towards the tail end of Q3, maybe beginning of Q4 last year. Um, it's really the first part of our push for even more granular data within Summon, um, which is pretty exciting. Uh, if you've attended uh, Brent Cook, uh, the product managers, uh, any of his webinars, um, you'll see he's constantly providing updates of how we're using in analytics to dig deeper into user behavior. That title clicks report exists here in the summon community folder. So it actually lives in a different place than most of the other reports do. And we're gonna let Oracle BI answers load. Um, and client center, or in um, knowledge center documentation, uh, you might see this called um, Oracle Business Intelligence. You might see it called Summon Analytics. Um, they're the same thing. So here is my report. Um, what's really neat about this, my, this report is right now it's set to a weekly basis. Um, 
but I can see the provider, the database code that I would input into the client center to look for this database, the name of the database, and the requests are how often a search result, a, a, a patron clicked through to um, one of the holdings or titles within this database from the summon search results. So reading this report for the week of September 28th, 2020, um, I can see my ProQuest database, library and information science abstracts, LISA, C-I-L-I-P edition, um, was clicked on twice and either a title or a journal article or something within those database was clicked through. Um, it's a really neat way to kind of do an apples to apples comparison. You can take, for example, um, your overlap analysis report or your database details or any of those reports and look at this report and kind of do a side by side of comparison to see, okay, where where are the number of unique titles versus the actual patron usage. Um, this, this report can also be made into a monthly or yearly report. Uh, I'm just going to show you how to do it because um, I am not versed in SQL, so there is a cheat. You would go to criteria. Okay, and as you can see here, we've got these fun selected columns. What I'm going to do is I am going to go to my dates and hit the little carrot. I'm going to click month. And then I only want it to tell me the month. So I'm going to actually delete this existing uh, week. And then what I'm also I'm going to do is I'm going to sort it by, I believe it's descending, so that I get the most recent result first and let's see if that works yeah okay so right now i can see it by month so october september august um and because this is a um a, a test site you'll probably find that in your back end and on this report um the results will be more robust there will be more databases um we just use this for demos. So reading this, I can look um, for the provider, the reprints desk with this database code, with the database <laughs> reprints desk name, uh, was clicked on once. Uh, same thing, connect and Y, alphanumeric database code, uh, and August was clicked at least, was clicked at least five times from the summon search results. Uh, if you wanna go a little, further in uh, date and you want to make this yearly, you're just going to do the same thing we just did. You are going to click the carrot on the date. You're going to choose year and always choose where it says date in parentheses. You're going to delete the month and hit results. Oh, and I see I screwed up. I forgot to sort. So I need to sort descending so that I can see it cleanly. Okay, and now here you go. So these are, this is all my data starting for 2020. And then as I scroll down 2019, um, I believe 2018 is probably about the furthest this report goes back to just because um, it was a, a newer rollout. Um, the other reports that I've mentioned um, in terms of usage and all those other things, um, you can find them one of two ways. You can always hit the home button and it'll usually pull up uh, what are the most popular reports. Uh, or you can also you can also go back to this screen, and your reports are going to live under shared folders, summon, usage, and then you clicked report. I showed you the title clicks report because a it gives you that 
granular database detail, and B, it lives in a completely different spot than all of these other reports. So I just talked about analytics, and we also have exciting news. Uh, we're having Oracle Analytics Server, also known as OAS. It's an upgrade. So what's going to happen to your reports? After November 15th, we're going to have a freeze. No new or updated reports will be migrated to the new platform. All the current analytics reports will be saved and migrated to Oracle Analytics except server, except for those filed under my folder. So let me show you specifically. So if you had a report living under this little car carrot and you had created several custom reports, you're going to want to save it elsewhere. Um, we have key learning resources for this. Um, we have a tutorial on saving the uh, reports so that they transform very nicely. We also have an overview of the upgrade, and we're really excited to uh, launch this and go live on November 22nd. Um, and then here's kind of um, the extra kind of crown jewel that we have on the piece. Um, are what other institutions have done in terms of looking at um, summon value. So developed by the summon user community and all of the hyperlinks except for one slide are available easily and publicly. Um, we have slides from data informed stewardship of search and discovery, uh, a case study by Yale University, um, a great presentation and video on discover what your users are discovering, leveraging pre-configured Google Tag Manager containers in Summon, uh, integrating a local art museum collection into Summon results, uh, boosting resource visibility with custom right-hand panels, user testing your way to a better Summon interface. And I also like to promote, um, if you're interested, I would contact your customer success manager because we do have custom scripts for usability testing. And then this is where um, you have to be an eLuna or Igloo member to easily access these. Um, one of them is what analytics tell us about facet use. Um, I always like to remind people facets are just the filters on the side of the summit search. Uh, why pay twice using the 360 overlap analysis tool? Down the infinite rabbit hole, the use of Google Analytics at, and OBI at the University of Leeds, and then gaining insights through some end logs. So all of these resources um, are either videos or presentations or um, in-depth case studies that would take a little more time than the span of one hour to dig into. So um, We've provided all the links here, but again, this particular slide that says exclusive to Eluna and Inglu, if you do not have a login, you'll, you won't be able to easily access these resources. To open up to any questions. Okay, yeah, thank you very much, Patty, uh, for that enlightening presentation. Uh, we do have some questions. Uh, first question is, is the overlap analysis of what's indexed in Summon? Uh, my understanding is that it really is pertaining to your um, specific holdings. So it's it can vary because remember the client center and summon and 360 core can be two different beasts. So I have to get more information on that. Um, but my understanding is the answer is it depends. It depends on the resource. Okay, uh, next question is a uh, follow up uh, with regards to overlap analysis. Um, is there a way to see which databases are overlapping? Um, I believe so. Unfortunately, with the technical difficulties I was having, you can actually customize the report and let me go back into the client center for that. And you can specifically select the databases you want to do a comparison to. I'll choose uh, a profile with less databases. Let's go to the overlap analysis. Okay. 
So here I can specifically select what databases I want to remove. I could do the same thing with what databases I want to add. But if you were to just run an overall um, overlap analysis and you're hoping it'll show you like specifically this database versus this database have the most overlap. Um, I'm not 100% sure that it actually goes into that level of detail unless unless you customize the report. Yeah, see, um, so I have the details. I can click to the totals, but in terms of the comparison list, I would have to do further editing for it to really do a one-to-one -one comparison. And even then it might be difficult. Yeah, if I edit the comparison list. So it's really up to you to kind of customize the overlap analysis with what databases you want to analyze. Uh, there are a couple of questions on blank lines. Um, and I think that that was, uh, or blank rows, that was um, during the uh, Summon Analytics demo. Let's take a look. Um, can you, while I'm waiting for this to load, Scott, can you expand more? Just why are there blank rows or what's going yeah, it's, on? Yeah, it's, it's, sorry if I missed it, but why are there some requests uh, through the rest of the row is blank, um, though the rest of the row is blank? What are the blank lines? I have to uh, take another look. I apologize for the time it's taking the it's in, load. It's in the title click report. Somebody's clarified. Let me see if I have a title click report saved. And while you're going to the title click report, uh, somebody did ask what uh, folder should they go to to find the title click report. The summon community folder. Um, and I will show that for some reason. It's not liking me right now. Okay, and then um, while you're doing that, you can uh, maybe multitask and ask answer another question, which is, um, will the titles click show access through browsing? I actually do not know that one. That would be a probably a question for either Brent or uh, support, as I have not had that specific question, so haven't had to deal with uh, browsing for that. And, you know, that's uh, one of those quick questions that you don't need to submit a case for, uh, but you could use our new online chat support option uh, to ask that type of question and somebody can give you a response uh, right away without you necessarily opening a case. If you haven't tried that out yet, it's uh, really useful for things like that. And Scott, didn't we also recently expand the hours of that? And we did. Covers okay. uh, majority of Europe. Uh, as well as uh, North America now. Okay, I got it in the analytics. So someone asked where the report lives. It's in the Summon Community folder. All you have to do is click on the terms Summon Community. Uh, I'm gonna hit edit and see if we can see what we were talking about in terms of the blank lines. I always like to demonstrate this report live just because um, I like having the most uh, up-to-date information, especially as it generates, its default is generated weekly. Um, were people referring to perhaps where the date isn't filled in here? Uh, somebody says uh, the blank lines have usage stats, but no other info. Huh. I have not encountered that. If you do, There's my record, what? Like, Sorry. The one, the one right below uh, William Hine seems to be a blank line, but yet it has two requests. I think that's what they might be uh, identifying with. Okay. In that case, it is um, something on either the way it's um, basically a summon and OBI might not be playing nicely at that particular moment. So I would specifically either uh, use live chat like Scott suggested, or um, if live chat is not available, submit a case and just mention, you know, I'm seeing 
give the provider name, give the alphanumeric code, uh, give the specific database, and your best way also is to screenshot it and specify, hey, what's going on? Um, but I do not have a definitive answer for that particular question. That would probably be more in the realm of support. Okay, um, I have uh, just put in uh, the live chat uh, links in the uh, in the chat box. So uh, along with, I've posted a, a few other links as well. Um, so please take advantage of uh, those resources that are available to you. Um, let me check and see if there are any other questions, Patty. Uh, otherwise, um, there are no other questions in chat or on the Q and A. So if you want to make some concluding remarks, that would be fantastic. Um, so I just want to thank you all for attending today. I know we covered a lot of features, but it's always good to have a refresher on the features and remind yourself how they can work in tandem with each other. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what we uh, put out with OAS. So that's something really to look forward to for next month. Um, taking advantage of the um, the live chat like Scott suggested, and then also contacting your customer success manager. They can actually work one on one with you to really help you create the in depth analysis that you need because you might be asking different questions. One institution might be asking, you know, um, where can I cut back uh, my library holdings and save on my budget? Whereas another institution is asking, okay, what does it for remote learners and for access to summon or access to client center resources, what does that look like on a year to year basis? So each of the tools is different for answering a different question and your customer success manager can really help you drill one on one on a particular conversation. Uh, I am also um, shamelessly plugging that we have the Charleston conference next week. Um, Ex Libris will have a virtual booth. And so if you are attending virtually, we uh, invite you to come on and stop on by. And that is all I had. Thank you all so much for your time.